very well done, mate. A fantastic yeah. effort yeah. yesterday. You put an, an extra yeah. effort. Oh. We will not try to do that. We need to 40 kilometers per hour. Well done, mate. I was uh, sitting on a Sunday morning around about 9.30 and the phone rang. A guy called Paul Horley called me and he said, Ninian, there's been an accident. And that accident has involved Luca on his bicycle and it looks like Luca has been paralysed. So, Luca and I had a conversation uh, and we were talking about whether or not we could play a role to help him raise the money to buy a suit, these are called ex Exco, I can never pronounce it right, Exco skeletons, but so that Luca could walk again. Carl says to me, you know, the thing is what we need to do is we need to fundraise for him and he needs, we need a hundred thousand euros to buy this kit. And I think I remember saying, oh, it's okay, it's easily done. We just walk to London and get lots of people to sponsor us for it. And I said to the, our people, who's going to get mine? this? We're going to walk 600 kilometres to London. Uh, and I was a little nervous, so I didn't, wasn't sure of the reaction. But suddenly, 40 or 50 hands shot up, crazy people. And everyone's jumping up saying, me, 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 me. And I just thought that was really amazing. The, the momentum was already there. That connection was there. If you could not leave anybody behind in the snow, uh, unwell, <laughs> dying, please don't do that. It's just amazing how people have got into this initiative and really having so many people willing to, to join us in this work. So it will be a fantastic adventure to make it all together with Luca. The future is exciting. I am ready. I hope my body is. My mind is there. I need to take my body with me. It will get there. I've run a marathon before. I cried for my mother. I um, did an excruciating last kilometre, which felt like 50 in itself. So I know what it's like hitting the wall. I expect to hit a few walls along the way, but I'm going to get over it. I think they don't know what they're expecting. I think they are being over optimistic from a point of view. It's going to be very tough. These poor, these guys have to walk 30 kilometers per, per day. And the weather conditions are a little bit, you know, no super friendly. But I think they will make it. And you'll never walk alone. So the, the money is being raised is solely for Luke. It's solely for this equipment, which is, it brings together human spirit and technological advances. So he's a, a bit like a modern bionic man. Sun is shining, nice and warm. It's like being a Spain on holiday. <laughs> hey guys, it's Russian. This is the way to do it. In Doha I had uh, my, my accident, cycling accident. Well, it, was, um, it was Saturday. I was doing my, my training for an Ironman. Ironman this competition where you swim four kilometers, you do cycling for 180 kilometers, and afterwards, because you know you have not done enough, you know you do a marathon. So I was doing my cycling session in the desert, literally in the desert. I was going from Doha towards Al Khor, which is another city in Qatar. So I was in the desert, straight line. There was uh, a grid, you know, where 
where the water goes. Question is why in Qatar they put the, the, the grid for the water in the desert? Anyhow, and uh, I saw it and as usual I said, okay, you, you go through, you pass through. But my front wheel got stuck, I tilt, and that's it. And then, <laughs> and then I realized that I was paralyzed, more or less chest down. I was cycling with a friend of mine from New Zealand. And then I said, um, I, cannot, I cannot move my legs, call the ambulance. He thought that I was joking. I said, come on you Italians, you don't, don't cry, you don't, don't, don't make stupid jokes. I said, no, 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 seriously, call the ambulance. So then he realized that it was a serious accident. He called the ambulance, ambulance came after 25 minutes, because of course it's not easy to find you in the desert the longest 25 minutes of my life. I remember very well, it was sky, sun, and then I was thinking about my wife, my daughter. I was thinking, don't die now because you are too young. I, I, at that time, I didn't know what was happening. Of course, I, I was feeling that I could not move my, my legs, but I was already convinced that it was a permanent legion, so a permanent situ things. And then I was already thinking, okay, but you know, the arms still work well, so maybe I can, I can keep doing sport, I can do job. But that was in the first 25 minutes. Strange to say, but these were my first thoughts. So my family, my wife, my daughter, my job and my sport. Hello, hello. Oh, somewhere in Belgium. We don't know the name of the place, but we are enjoying so much the snow. Before we will make a good training session every week, we go back. And uh, I think almost one time a week we will do the training. We have in front of us a guy who is what I would call complete athlete. Since October we have started with the rework robot exoskeleton. Okay now start turning now. And uh, now. every week Luca is improving. Every week it's difficult. Every week we try something else, turning, uh, stopping uh, and the rhythm. And every week it's improving. Keep going, keep going. The weather's a bit ropey. It's going to be 50 mile an hour winds and 7 centimeters of snow forecast. So we're a little nervous, but very excited. Wow, beautiful weather, snow, everything. It's very inspiring, for example, when we go for training and especially during the, during the cycling. We go for 70, 80 K. And during the ride, there's a point where you, you, you feel like that you are exhausted, right? And he's always the one that says, come on, keep pushing, keep pushing. We are not done. So then it was a very hard, hard, hard job going through all these things, which took a lot of tears and blood, <laughs> so, so to speak. You know. 
Uh, this was, you know, my, uh, my, my life during the rehabilitation. Getting, as much, getting back as much as I pos possibly could. I consider Luca part of my family. Uh, it's, it goes beyond then the, the friendship, and it's the and I believe that is the right person where you can share everything about life, not only good moments but even bad moments, and then together you can overcome any kind of challenge in your life. All this is giving me additional strength, motivation, courage, spirit to make what a few months ago I thought impossible, possible. Specifically, my company, my management, my colleagues, Vodafone, are each their own best. Thank you and that God bless you. First time I met Luca, I um, whipped his backside playing pool. He obviously cried a lot. And um, we said that we would get back to that billiard table. So I say to Luca, look, the walking I don't think is a big deal. I'm sure you can walk again. But can you ever beat me at billiards? <laughs>